Hey, did you ever want to be a silversmith but felt like it would be too intimidating or labor intensive or expensive? Well, I want to show you today in this video just a super simple way to approach silversmithing, which would teach you how to set a beautiful gem stone in sterling silver and set you up to be ready to build your own jewelry and sell your own jewelry and even start a business. In this video today, you are going to learn step-by-step step how to set a beautiful gem, which has such a beautiful vibration. And you wanna carry and wear these gems with you because they really feed your spirit and your soul. I'm gonna show you how to set this in sterling silver and how to polish from start to finish. I also wanna show you a little bit of the jeweler saw. Which I'll show you in super easy way and just to cut out the back so you can really see your gemstone shining through. So in here also, I'll be talking a lot about the philosophy of soldering. For me, after all these years, I figured out a way to jumpstart people and super speed you into learning this silversmithing technique and taking it all in. And it really is talking about how heat affects metal and what angles you have to do and how and where. And from this concept that I actually created, I have people who are jumping out from this course and really building very quickly from practice, just building very quickly. So this is my studio and it's very well equipped, but I wanted to let you know that I actually put together and used a very minimalistic toolkit that I call the Nomadic Toolkit. I've done a lot of traveling all over the world and used this toolkit. With this, you would be able to build anything that I'm building in the film today. You'd be able to build a whole body of work if you wanted to, to sell and to create a business with and to really get a good start with your business. Um, I've got actually the tools right by the description below. You're welcome to take a look at that. And it's what I'll be using in the film today. My name is Susan Lenart and I have built jewelry and been in the fashion and adornment world for over 30 years. I started by building a line of jewelry for Banana Republic, for Nordstrom, for Ann Taylor, just to name a few many years ago. I've also done Hollywood sets that have been really fun and exciting and i did pieces for game of thrones i've done pieces for these beautiful performers at coachella i really exciting i've also worked in the fashion field for many many years doing runway where i could dress a model eight models from head to toe just in jewelry and adornment one of the other things that i've done is i have actually worked with a lot of stylists all over the world for vogue magazine and l magazine and I just want to say there's so many interesting aspects to do in this field in creating jewelry and creating adornment. And it all starts right here with step one in the studio. Hey, I'm gonna tell you about the immediate tools that I'm gonna need to solder this piece and materials. So, on my, I'm right-handed on my right-hand side. I have a paintbrush, a soldering pick, very well used, some tweezers, these are metal smithing tweezers, and a marker. So I need these four tools. Besides that, I have my gem that I will be setting today. I've got just the four pieces of material, one, two, three, yep four pieces of material that I'll need. And that I have some twisted wire. I've got some bezel wire that's filigree. I've just got a 18 gauge, just round wire. And I have a 22 gauge, um, maybe a one and a half by three sheet. This is more, this is bigger. It's, it's more than enough that I need. Okay, that's my material. Here's what I'm working with. I have a soldering, soldering board underneath and I am working with a fine screen. Whenever, I talk a lot about the screens in here. The screens actually create heat. So, you know, when I'm using even a butane torch, they create heat and uh, carries heat throughout here. So it's able to heat from under. So while I'm using my torch and coming in and above, 
I've got my screen heated and I can heat up my whole piece and let that solder flow. It's all about letting the solder flow. I'll be showing you how to use that a little bit later on. Let me talk a little bit about the solder to you. So there's three different kinds of solder that I use. And what I do is I just cut these up into tiny pieces. You can buy it cut up and it gets to be more expensive. And I start with a hard solder, which means it melts at 1700 degrees. So that this is the hottest, you need a really hot flame to get the hard solder to flow, which means to run and just to bond your piece. The medium solder that flows, I think at 14, well, it flows at a lower, a little bit lower temperature, but right in the middle. I do 90% of my work with medium solder. In fact, if you didn't wanna buy any other solder, you can do all of your work with medium solder. Medium solder is the closest color to sterling silver metal. So this would be a really good one just to use for your whole piece. I spent quite a few years just using medium. So if you just wanna invest in one solder, invest in a medium solder. And then an easy solder that I only use right towards the end of the project to either attach the final attachment. This one actually flows at a much lower temperature. So, you know, it doesn't take as much heat. Why do we start with a hotter heat, medium heat, lower heat? Because Every time I go into my piece to solder, I don't have to bring it all the way up to that temperature and have my piece fall apart, you know, as I'm working forward. As you get to be better and better, or you can start from the very beginning, just using medium solder. So it's a fun challenge. So um, I also want to talk to you about flux. The flux, think of the flux as the material or the liquid that helps everything flow. So what you really need to look for is clean metal, clean metal that's sanded or pickled, which I'll talk about pickle in a little bit, is clean metal. So clean metal, you need perfectly clean metal. If you see your metal black or with the carbon on there, you're never gonna get your solder to flow. So what flux does, we're gonna paint this on everything. Everything gets fluxed. It actually is a borax base and it is almost like putting a little coating of glass over the t ceiling up your silver so you can get in and solder your pieces together without creating all this carbon, which if you see this carbon or the blackened surfaces, you'll never get to solder. So first of all, you know, one of the things that you need to do to make sure that your solder is gonna flow, because that's all we need to think about, is to make sure you have super, super clean metal. So you can see all the pieces that I'm starting with here are white and clean, and they have been in the pickle, which I will talk about the pickle. But the flux, coating the flux on here, which I'll show you once I get started, how I'm coating everything. This will protect all my metal from getting the carbon blackened surface. Sometimes what I do is I'll have my flux in a spray surface and just spritz it on because it makes it nice and easy just to spritz it. You know, especially once I have my heat going, I can just spritz on. So this is just a different form of the flux. I use sandpaper, which I'll show you guys here. I've got my sandpaper. This is just from Home Depot, the hardware store. There's a 220 and it just, you know, also can clean metal. So when I talk about clean metal, it's sanded, it's filed, it's pickled. I also wanted to tell you a little bit about the pickle. This is pickle, or granulation. What it is, it, it is a corrosive. Think of salt, how salt will take off the layers of dirt or oil or carbon on your sterling silver. So you always want to start with really, really clean silver, like I mentioned. So I actually just will take like about three tablespoons of this, uh, the granulation and come on over here. This is my pickle pot right here. It's just a $20 crock pot that's from um, Walmart, anywhere you can find it. And I put it on a very low temperature and I put three tablespoons into here and it's a nice hot water. This is where, you know, I will put my pieces in to clean off the surface and they'll be in there for, you know, just give it like a good five minutes in there, you know, and sometimes right as I'm finished towards the end, I'll put in there a little bit longer and you literally will get a beautiful, beautiful white surface 
that then you have to clean off the pickle, which I'll show too. This is the gem that I'm working with today. This is Hezonite, and this is right from India, hand cut. And you can see that it has, this is called the rose cut. And I wanna show you how to set the rose cut because there's a lot of people who really don't know about the rose cut. The nice thing about this, you'll see them on diamonds, on beautiful stones, but they really help to bring the light through to your stone with this depth. So to start with, I'm gonna measure the side. So I'm gonna actually just take this off my bench. This is what I'm gonna fire onto. And I wanna get my measurement to the side. So this is my filigree bezel wire. This goes around the sides and I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers and I'm gonna make sure that, that the edge of my piece is cut nice and straight. You really wanna start off nice and straight. And you know, if not, you can also just take it and hit it a little bit with your, with your file. And I'm gonna start my, you know, this is an oval, so I'm gonna start my edge just curving it a little bit like this and bringing it over to my piece and see how nicely that sits in here. And I start with a small piece because it's easier to get around. The hard part is, is to show you guys this without covering up what I'm doing, but I'll try do my best. Okay. So I'm actually bringing this all the way around here as you know, making it a nice fit. You want it as a nice, tight, snug fit as possible. And then I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna mark exactly where I need to cut. This needs to be exact. You know, the tighter you have your piece in here, the easier everything is going to be. So with my snips, I'm just gonna go in and I can see exactly where to cut this and I'm just gonna snip it, okay? Now, the nice thing is I have this black line so I'll know where to solder and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm gonna take this now and let me see how the, oop, for some reason I'm a, am I off? Yep, I'm a little bit off. So it's always good to be off a little bit larger than smaller. So I'm gonna come back in again and I'm taking my pliers and I'm butting it up against the side. And I actually see that I just need to cut this off the tiniest little bit more. Okay. So I'm gonna go in on the other side of this line and cut this. A little bit goes a long way. So this is good. You really want it to be this nice, snug little fit and this is looking beautiful so i'm very very happy with the fit okay so i'm going to hit the end just a little bit with the file to make sure i get a perfect fit and if i have anything else that needs to come come off of the edges this is the time to get your piece nice and straight and to get it all under control and then i'm going to actually go back in and put a little marker on the edges so I can see exactly where my soldered line needs to be. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to bend it together. And you want this to fit exactly. See how beautiful that is fitting together? The top needs to fit together a little bit. There we go. And then let me grab my other pliers because what I do is I want to grab a flat nose plier and I'm just gonna get in here and press everything together. And then I make sure the bottom is straight, the top is straight, and everything is ready to go. Okay, so with this piece, the, ne the next thing that I do is I'm gonna dip the whole piece in flux. And I'm gonna start with a hard solder. And I don't need my screen for this. And this is my hard solder. I'm just gonna put a few granules right here. Now I can move my gem away and make sure you know where you're putting it because <laughs> you can lose a gem easy. And now, you know, what I really wanna do is at the beginning to start, dip your um, soldering into the flux. And let me grab my torch. 
I'm actually soldering with a different torch, but this works just the same with the butane torches that I showed. So I'm gonna get it lit. This is actually an acetylene torch, but I promise you it's the same thing. Oop. Turn it down. The first thing I wanna do is heat my pick. It's like, this is like, um, this is the flux that I'm heating, gets everything warmed up. This is all fluxed also. I just wanna warm my piece up and then I'm gonna come over here to that heart solder and I just need the tiniest of pieces like this. You can see the little ball on there and I'm gonna lean this right up against my Okay, sometimes I just like to add a little bit of extra on there just to make sure it's done. There we go, and my piece is done. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna quench it in the flux. The flux is actually um, really helps to clean your piece and take off any of that fire scale on here. Okay, you can see a little bit of the solder on the ends. I'll be able to clean that up later. So now I wanna go ahead and get my stone set, put my stone inside, get, get my bezel completely set so my stone will be a perfect fit. And voila, look at that. So I know that I did things right. It's really snug in there, fitting well. And then what I wanna do, if since this is a gem and I don't wanna scratch up my gem whatsoever, I'm gonna take my bezel that I've just created for it and lay it on top of this 220 sandpaper and I'm just gonna rub the bottom very gently on here. And this will help to get the back nice and flat. So it will sit perfectly. You can see the only, you know, in part of the philosophy, the way that solder joins is both of the ends need to be butted up perfectly to each other. So this also needs to be laying completely flat once I get it onto my, onto my um, sheet metal. And you can see I worked with the bottom of, of this piece. Maybe I need a tiny bit more uh, work on the sandpaper, but it is looking really good. And you can see here, this is big enough. This, you know, I actually just need the tiniest of pieces right here. So let me just hit it a couple more times with sandpaper, get it nice and flat. I'm gonna work the side of this. I got a little bit of uh, solder right on this side. I wanna scrape that off. And again, I'm gonna come over to my stone and I'm gonna set my stone in here. And I actually, you need to decide which way you're going to set your stone. I see people setting their stone right, you know, with with the the proper way actually is to have the um, the rose cut in the background. But you know, it's, it looks beautiful either way. So I'm having to hold this up in the air because I really need to make sure that my stone is set in here right. And don't worry, if you can see here, the thing that I wanna show you today is just cutting out the back and creating a support system so I can get my stone to sit up straight. Since my this stone is nice and um, evenly formed, you know, with circles or with, you know, stones that are calibrated to be a perfect oval, I can move around my piece and I can actually set my stone upside down and it will fit exactly the same when it is right side up. So this work, I'm just gonna make sure there's no loose ends. It's a perfect fit. So I have to be able to, there we go. That's a perfect fit there. So it looks like it's fitting very, very nicely. And that's the type of work that you have to do after you sand, because this little bit of sanding might put your bezel just a little bit off. Now I'm gonna bring on this tray that I'm actually going to solder onto. So this is pretty cool. I'm gonna set it this way. This screen will help pick up some really nice 
heat. So really you're gonna see me, the philosophy of this is I'm gonna be working underneath to get my board really hot. My soldering board, this will hold heat. This is built to hold heat to make it easier. When I'm coming up cold, this is the first time I'm soldering today. So um, it's gonna be cold. It's gonna take a little bit more heat than normal. Once I get rolling through the day and I'm on my second or third piece, it gets much easier. And then I'm gonna start heating up my screen. So I've got the layer on the bottom heating up. I've got my screen heating up. And then I'm gonna start hitting underneath my sterling silver to heat up because most of this work is going to be done from underneath. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pop out my gemstone, put it to the side again and I'm gonna coat my whole piece with flux. Just the top of it. And here you can see how this spritzer works beautifully. And I'm just gonna use as little silver as possible. So I'm just gonna move this into the corner. There's a lot of excess silver on here that I can cut off after I get this going. Um, so this is really full with a lot of flux and I'm gonna heat heat up the flux before I put my medium solder down. So, you know, I started with a hard. My next step is I'm gonna move into a medium solder. So I'm gonna go ahead and light my torch. And this is just to warm it up and get, you can see what my flux looks like once it dries. I did over flux, but you'll see like a white powder happening. Just a minute, as soon as I get this flux dried out. And it heats it up just the tiniest bit. So I'm not gonna go any farther with the piece. It's well below soldering. But what I'm gonna do is take my paintbrush, dip my paintbrush in the flux, and I'm gonna grab my medium. And I am going to just deposit on the inside. Uh, just a little handful of solder and I put in more than enough solder only because I'm gonna be um, attaching a uh, wire around the outside and I'm not gonna be using solder for that. It's a real cool process. I'll show you that in just a minute, just for a decorative element on the side. Okay, so there we go, everything's in place. If there is too much flux at this point, your solder will jump up like popcorn. And you know, just to keep it clean on the inside, I wanna make sure all of my solder is touching the edges. Every single piece of solder has to be touching both the uh, back plate of silver and the bezel wire of silver. It has to be touching both. This is what it takes to solder this down. So you saw that this sits down, my bezel wire sits down in the back plate so beautifully flush, which means flat. So that really helps out to get the solder to, to work beautifully. Get my torch lit and I'm gonna use my pick and I'm gonna come in like I was talking about and I'm just gonna heat up my baseboard. And you can see I'm farther, a little bit farther away. Sometimes I work right on the edge, but I'm a little farther away. I'm getting my baseboard really hot. Now I'm coming into my screen you want it to see a nice red glow underneath. And this should have actually, and then as soon as I get such a glow going underneath, this is gonna be my heat source to literally give my, my bezel um, the flow that it needs, the solder the flow that it needs. So I'm gonna do 90% from underneath. And when I lay down this sterling silver piece here, I should only have to do 10% around the edges. So I'm getting ready to do that. This should start soldering now, and I'm just gonna hit around the edges of my piece. And if it doesn't work right away, I'm gonna get back under here again, because really my back plate needs 90% of the heat. And then my um, bezel wire, because it's filigree and thinner, it needs like 10%. So here we go. There we go, see that flow happening? You see that white flash? That is literally it. So even if all of my solder doesn't flow on the inside, you know, you can see it really is a nice flow. I've got silver. I have an excessive amount of silver I put in here because the next step 
I'll show you how to just do a decorative element to make the outside look really nice. Now you can see, I do have a lot of fire scale here, but um, you know, my piece was protected. It, it, it flowed, my piece was protected from the flux. So what I need to do now is I'm gonna put this dirty piece into my pickle, but the first thing I'll have to do is, because there's heat on here, I have to quench it in water just so I can bring the temperature of the silver back up to normal. And then I'm gonna let it sit in the pickle for about five minutes. So come on over here. Here's my station. I've got my pliers. I'm gonna dip it in. And I use actually this type of a screen. You can drop it right into your pickle. And then this just needs to sit in here for about a good three to five minutes. Close it right up and you don't wanna breathe that in. So I'm over here at the pickle. My piece is ready. It's been in for five minutes. One important thing I want to tell you about pickle is, and sterling silver is that you have to use copper. You can never put metal into your pickle or what will happen is your sterling silver piece will get coated with copper and it'll take a long time to get it off. If that happens, I'll give you a little tip. You need to put peroxide inside of your um, pickle, mix that combination together, and man, does that jump start and work quick. So, you know, as far as this, this screen that I have in here is actually built for silversmithing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the piece out, dip it into water, bring it back over to my studio space. And I just need to clean this up. This is wet. You wanna make sure that the pickle is cleaned off of here as good as you can because the pickle will keep your piece from being soldered. And remember, it's a corrosive, so it'll actually keep corroding unless we correct it. So that's cleaned up a little bit. Doesn't matter if it's still wet. And I'm gonna put this back onto the soldering board. This time I'm putting this as close to my edge as possible. Oh, actually what I need to do is create um, just a decorative end, to, just a decorative end to that. So I have a little piece of twisted wire and I am going to cut, give myself a nice flush edge with double flush pliers. That means it looks like a tabletop on the end. This is dead soft, which means it is um, easy to bend. So I'm gonna have a really easy time bending this. You, you really wanna work with dead soft wire when you're hugging it right up against your pieces. So I'm creating just a little edge on here. Okay. So most of the time it's like, oh my gosh, I just get a perfect edge to this. So I'm just gonna bring this around and hold down one end and bring it around. Get a nice tight fit. And it's like, yeah, it is hard to get around like this, but you just hold it. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of a marker edge on here. Oh. to know exactly where to cut it. And I want another flush edge on here. And I saw it was really close to the end here with this marker. And see how gorgeous it really is, like a definitely a uh, flush cut. So I'm gonna actually work this together. It doesn't matter what your piece is shaped at right now because it just doesn't matter. The only thing that matters at this point is that my bezel wire is exactly touching and it's sitting together. See how beautiful that is? Okay, I'm gonna push this back a little bit. And the same as what I did with the bezel wire, I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna dip it in my flex Bring it down. This is again, anytime you're working with a piece of your metal that is away from the main piece, you're gonna use a hard. So that means I'm gonna go back in and grab some of my hard solder, lay it down. And anytime I'm working within the piece, it's gonna be a medium solder that I'm working with. 
Okay, I'm just gonna put a little dot of hard solder right there. Let me grab my torch. You don't need you don't need it that you don't need your torch. Whoop, you don't need your torch that hot. So you just want the tiniest of flames. Dip it in my flux. I just need the tiniest of balls. See how tiny that ball is? That's a hard that's of hard solder, and I'm going to lay it right here, right on my seam. And you don't want to over, you don't want to over fire your piece. And I'm going to bring this right into my flux again, because this gives me the cleanest metal. Check my edge. It's nice and soldered together. And now I am going to spread it onto here. So whatever side is the easiest to bring it down on here. And this should be an exact fit also. Let's see if I can get this into shape a little bit better. You can see it. Sometimes it's just a little fumbly. Get it back into shape. So anytime you're heating, here's a little tip. Anytime you're heating, your piece gets annealed, which means it gets to be like butter, all of your silver. Anytime you're hitting it with a hammer, your piece gets work hardened, which means it is um, nice and hard. So it's ready to be worn. When you're working with it, you want it like butter, but when you bring it out into the world, you really want your piece to be nice and work hardened. There, see how beautiful this edge is here? Okay, I wanna make sure it's fitting beautifully because this is the way it's gonna look. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the edge. I'm gonna coat it in flux. Now remember, you guys don't have to have all the excess on there. I just do. Get my torch. And again, I'm gonna start with heating all the way under onto my, all the way under, heating up my board because it's been a little while since I've been back. Should be hot though. You know, by the time you're, like I said, by the time you're a couple, dry this up a little bit. I don't have to put on more solder because this solder, what I'm just gonna do is get my solder to reflow once again. And so that this is the nice thing. It's really hard to get, you know, your solder, it gets messy when you have to have to solder these pieces down. It's so much fun. There's so many layers to soldering with silver, but I don't. I, I put on a lot of solder to begin with, like I talked about. I over soldered, so now I've got enough solder, and what I'm trying to do is pull it out to the edges so it can solder down this twisted wire, just as or whatever you know you want to end up putting on your edges. So remember, 90% on the back plate still, and 10% on my bezel wire or my twisted wire. So both of them. So I'm bringing this solder out. So I'm gonna bring it close to the ground again. When I pull my pick out from under here, I'm gonna quench it in my flux because you don't ever wanna to touch a hot pick, pick to your work. See how my pick is getting so hot? It will actually destroy your, your and melt your silver. So once I get ready to go, I'm gonna quench it. You heard that quench and see that, see how my, it's ready to go. And I'm just gonna press it down the tiniest bit all around, even on this backside, just pressing it down. And my solder's flowing and it flows all the way to the outside. See that? Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm mean, actually, you really wanna wait like a, just a couple seconds, maybe 10 seconds for it to cool. Once I pick it up, it's cooling. You never wanna dip it right into water or it'll warp your metal. So let it cool, then I'm gonna quench it. Bring it over, quench it, and pickle it once again. Voila, my piece is ready. It's been in here for a couple minutes. So here it is here with the pickle on there. I'm gonna dip it in water, and I'm just gonna clean off. I'm just gonna clean off just the pickle. We don't want this corrosive on there. Absolutely not. Look at how beautiful that looks. 
beautifully done, exactly what I was looking for. To cut off the excess metal, there's two ways you can go about it. One is with tin snips, which I'm just gonna use today just to make things nice and simple. And the other one is with the jeweler saw, which I will show you a little part of the jeweler saw in, in just a little bit. But if you don't have a jeweler saw yet, um, you know, this is the way to do it, is with these tin snips here. So I'm just gonna take my piece. Now with the tin snips, it's not as accurate. You can't use tin snips with, you know, a lot of undercuts and a lot, a lot of complexity. But this piece is not, you know, you'll really get a, a better look with your jeweler saw. But for the sake of making things simple in this class, in this workshop, I'm just gonna go around and cut it with tin snips. Once you get to a certain area, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, you kind of have to cut it in a square with your tin snips because you can't go around corners with your tin snips. You know, it's not like cutting paper. It actually is more like, um, okay, let me get this off. So your metal isn't in the best of shape you know, with tin snips, but it is a quicker process. So I'm gonna finish up going around. Nice little scraps I have here. And here's what my piece looks like. So you can see I have some areas that need a little bit of filing. You don't want them to be sharp at all. So I'm gonna bring this over to my bench pin right here. And I'm literally just gonna go in with my file and just kinda, of, you need a little bit more filing. If you decide to use snips, you just have to hit it with the file. If you use jeweler saw, you can get such a beautiful um, cut on here that you really won't need your file. See what this looks like. Let's see how beautiful my edges are. You don't want to damage the um, you don't want to damage your twisted wire at all or your edges. So you just want to get it just right. And you only want to go one direction with a file. So I'm actually just going one direction. You never wanna pull back on your file because that's working against yourself. So here's my beautiful piece, a little bit wet, but it's done beautiful. And the only thing I have to do now, I was talking about with these pieces that, um, you know, you can see this is not gonna sit in here. You know, I'll, I'll show you a couple ways I'm gonna work this, but, if I want this shine to come through, I do want to punch a little hole in the back and it also helps to set my, my metal as well. So I'm going to drill through and I'm just going to show you a little bit with the jeweler saw, um, you know, or you can use a drill. So come on over here. This is my drill. You can use a hand drill. You can use a, a regular drill and I'm just going to pop through right in the center. Pop a hole in the center. Voila! The jeweler saw is such a necessary tool in um, silversmithing. Why? I'm going to show you exactly why. So um, it's the only blade that I can get to the inside and slip through this hole. So to start with, I, I have my blades that come in like a little package of 12. And you want to slip one out. And you're not going to be able to see with your eye very well, the blade. And this is an aught three. I use aught zero three for this, you know, really you wanna pick your blade for how it fits on your metal. So I know I was using um, a 22 gauge. So it's like this fits right in between beautifully. And that's how you decide your, your, your saw. So this is an aught three. And you wanna, you wanna set up your jeweler saw like your, you know, it's like if you're, petting your cat or your dog, it's like, and it's sitting away from you, this is the way it goes, it's smooth. If I move my finger this direction, it's real jaggedy, so I know I'm setting it up the right way. And that's exactly how you need to set up your jeweler saw. So you can see the way I'm, I'm leaning my saw in like this. I'm gonna go into the edge, I'm gonna open up my end on here, 
inside this washer and I'm gonna secure it in nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch this together. You can see it's made. So, you know, you wanna find a part of your body. I'm gonna lean into this, pull my blade at the same time and secure the other end in. My hands are already getting dirty just from this much work. And you want it to be, oh, this one needs to be a little tighter, I can see, but you want it to be like you are playing an instrument. There we go. How do you like that? Now my blade is fresh from the pack, but what you, you know, it, to keep this lubricated, to go through everything, you just wanna put your wax on here like this. Nice wax on, oh, what I wanna show you though, that's how you set your blade. But what I want to show you is when I am cutting out the inside of a piece, and this is exactly why the jeweler saw, I'm gonna thread it right through this hole that I made. And I'm again gonna secure this in and pull it as tight as I can. I'm just gonna go in and I need to cut out, you know, sometimes I cut it out with marker in here, but I'm just, you wanna actually, if you think of it as having two teeth, going through your silver at one time. I'm gonna very, very gently, there's so many different rules and I, I have a little short video for you coming up soon that really is all about the jeweler saw. But your hand here that has the, that has the um, handle, just keep it as loose as possible. A lot of people think to cut metal, you have to be so, so strong and push hard. And it actually is the exact opposite. You actually need to come at your, your piece and your jeweler saw relaxed, in a zen mood, as relaxed as possible, and you're not pushing forward. You're just letting your tool do the work. And the more you can just let your tool do the work, the better off, the better you're gonna love your jeweler saw. I have people who love the jeweler saw and I have seen people who say that they hate the jeweler saw. And it all really has to do with how gentle you're being and how you're literally letting your tool do the work. I have a little hole in here. It's enough to let the light through. I'm just gonna clean it up a little. And that is a beautiful, beautiful size for me. And I'm gonna take this little scratch, scratch bright pen. Oop. I'm gonna take this pen right here and I'm gonna get in and I'm just really gonna clean out this inside. This cleans it out so beautifully. And it helps to finish that sanding on the edge too. Work it on the back. There are actually beautiful little round files that is in that kit. And you can bring it over your piece like this and just really get in nicely to this inside part. Now remember, just on the thrust forward, you're gonna be taking away metal and you just don't really wanna hit it on the way coming back up again. It just damages your tool. You wanna keep your tool as healthy as possible. Let me go a little bit from in from this way. Okay. Nice and clean, really looking good. I'm almost ready for my stone, but there's, and you can see how my stone is going to fit in here much nicer with the hole in the bottom. It brings it down to a level where I can have my uh, prongs secure it down, voila. So that really helped hold this in and solve the solution. And this hole right here is holding my, my stone in. There's many different ways you can do this, but this is one of the ways, because from that little hole, you're seeing it bring all this beautiful light in. The last step, I need to take my gem out, put it to the side for the last time. And what I'm gonna do, because this is one of the, 
you know, there's so many different ways you can put the attachments on. But what I'm just gonna show you is taking a 22 gauge wire and I'm going to be putting, um, attaching the wire right to the back. So you have to, I really needed to do that cut out first and then I'm gonna actually cut this in the end and I'll show you exactly how I'm doing that. So I'm gonna take about two, three inches and this is gonna be soldered down flat on here and it's a light, light gauge wire and then I'll just show you some twists. So I'm gonna start with, remember everything has to be coated in flux. Everything is coated that we're doing. I don't have to have this on the screen. And the reason I don't want this on the screen is I don't want my bezel wire to um, damage. So I'm actually just gonna sweat solder, uh, a little bit of solder onto this piece here. I'm gonna do some easy solder just on this last, this is the last time I'm going into solder on my piece. So I'm gonna grab up a little bit of easy and put it right here. Put an extra one there just in case. And um, let me get my torch. Okay, and I'm actually just gonna, it's called sweat solder. And I'm gonna sweat this kind of a big piece there, but I'm gonna sweat this right onto the back. Uh, everything has to be coated in uh, flux, like I said, and solder flows wherever the heat goes is the same. So I want to stay on this side. See how I'm staying on this side because I want, I want my solder, I want my solder available. I'll put on a little bit more here. I want my solder available for just to, to lay down flat on here. Now, I also showed you guys locking pliers. And the reason for locking pliers is this reason exactly. I'm gonna try to get this. I'm gonna lock my pliers on like this. And now the important part is, you guys, with this, it's so easy. Can I, let me tell you how easy it is to melt this piece of wire. So you're doing 97% of your heat on this piece here. And if there's not enough flux and you already got it hot, I can just spritz it on like this. 97% of your heat, I'm just hovering. I'm, I'm going straight on with the heat. I'm just hovering my wire above. And when I see my piece turn up to a red glow, then I can lay this on. There we go. Now with an easy solder, you cannot move it. But did you see how quickly that flows? And once I get it on here, I can make sure my edges are down. But you really want, there was only like 3% heat on this wire. And that actually is a piece of solder that I'm gonna have to sand off. Now, I'm gonna put this right into the flux, dry it, clean it, cool it off. This is where I like to quench a lot of mine. And my next step that I have to do I did that beautiful job of opening up the back of this. I can see it soldered down so beautifully on the back of here that I do not need this section in the middle. So I'm just gonna snip this off because this is would prevent my stone from sitting so nicely on there. There we go. So now what I just need to do, so this doesn't catch on my customer's clothes, my buyer, is I'm just gonna get in and I am hitting this with a round file again and just really getting my edges clean. No jagged edges, no jagged edges. Okay. There we go, we have it done. There's a little bit of solder on here. I'm gonna have to fire a little bit of this off but I'm gonna put this back in the pickle. Piece is ready. So here we go, out of the pickle, into the water. Oop, dropped it again. <laughs> into the water and, oh, where's your towels when you need them, right guys? And uh, I'm gonna again, just really clean this up. So you can see it looks like a powdery white on here. So it's really good just to get in, get all this pickle off of here and you're gonna see a beautiful sterling silver, whoop, start shining through. And let me get the back of this. 
And normally, really, I'm just working flat and making sure that I get the whole wire. Now to get this center part right here, I need to get in and really clean this up. You can see, because of where my heat was, all that extra solder that you saw on the inside is now gone because it actually will flow to, you know, under the seams and it'll go wherever the heat goes. So you have complete control of where your heat lands. Now, um, I'm going to show you the liver of sulfur real quick, cleaning it up. So you first have to clean off all that pickle. And now I can bring this over to my liver of sulfur. Let's come over here. If you like this little bit of a darkened look, this is, um, you know, and then we're going to clean this up after. This is actually, it's a natural, it's natural, but it is that uh, sulfur smell that we all sometimes, that rotten egg smell that if you know of. And this liquid form really keeps it, um, it's a live mineral, so it really keeps it live. When you start using crystals, they actually expire fairly quickly. So I've got the inside going. And this is the, what I use here, and I'm gonna dip this in, and this should instantly become darker. Oh, mine isn't instantly. Let me put in a little bit more liver sulfur for some reason. You can see this nice yellow color of sulfur. It smells wonderful over here. We're gonna dip it in and there you go. Nice and black. And this also we have to rinse off. So I'm gonna put this into the water. And we're gonna go right back over and get this cleaned up. Wipe this down. Now, with the liver of sulfur by hand, you can get a beautiful, beautiful shine. Just by this type of movement, you can get a beautiful shine. You know, you can also polish. I'm not gonna show really, you know, I'm just gonna show with, the, with, these, hand, with these tools, the nomadic tools, getting a beautiful shine, but there certainly is a lot more in other, other film that I do where I'm showing the Dremel and polishing tools and, you know, there's so much more. But when we're keeping this back to simplicity, this is the way you really can get a beautiful piece is with this nice, um, you know, these wire brushes. They bring your silver up to a shine. I want to remove all of this darkening on the inside of here because remember what this dark would do is... Um, it actually would keep my, my gem from shining. You know, you'd never want this real darkened type of look. Get the back cleaned up really well. You can bring it back to a beautiful shine. And this is the gold. So this one actually gives you a better shine. And with these really brisk movements that I'm doing here, this gives you the shine. So, you know, this is an oil. This will protect your silver. This protects your silver and um, coats it and really gives it a nice look. Okay, we can clean this up in the end too. Now, if you're afraid that your, um, that your piece is going to be darkened, you know, it, it oxidizes, silver oxidizes. You can take a little bit of Renaissance oil, a little bit of Renaissance wax. This is a wax and you can just, you know, coat the inside because if it's coated, it's not going to oxidize. It's it's a nice thing to do with your with your work. You just kind of rub it in, gives you a beautiful beautiful look and the inside won't oxidize once I set the stone. Okay. Okay. Now because there's so many different ways to do this, you guys. This is just one version to get your um to get your piece, you know, set in here. You know, I use a number of different settings that I can show you through time. But for today, all we need, because the back is cut out and I'm gonna have this gemstone sit all the way down inside of here. Yep. 
and this this hole should you know the hole actually sits right inside here so i'll be able to put all the prongs over so i'm going to move over to my bench pin this is the way i really love setting and I am getting um, my pliers in here that are nice and flat, but they're tapered. And this actually, you wanna start very, very slowly. First thing you wanna do is just go around and move. You don't wanna do everything at one time, but I'm holding my stone in here secure. And I'm literally through the first steps and you cannot touch your gem with your pliers because that actually would, um, scratch you don't want to hurt your gem at all so i'm just going to go in and just kind of bring the prongs slowly but surely down and around without moving my stone and move from side to side for the camera's sake i'm trying to get this in front of the camera and once i have everything in place and i could see my gem is sitting straight I can just start bending these down, but not all the way down. It really is, we're working in increments here. Tiny increments. You don't want to set the whole prong at one time. Get to this side, start setting my prongs down. This is a beautiful bezel. It gives you a nice look and it really provides these very, very nice um, prongs for your work. Okay. So here we go here. Once I get these down, I'm pretty much secure. My my gem is secure in here. So now I just need to really, so I'm gonna go around along the top of here. It's not gonna move at all. So now I'm pressing these down onto the surface without hitting my stone at all. So what I do is I'll usually secure it onto the, the point of my pliers onto my bench and just bring it around and secure my edges. Okay, so once I have that done, I can take a piece of plastic or wood and I can just, this I can touch onto my bezel. This is actually plastic. I can touch onto my stone. So this I'm just rolling up. Um, you could use plastic material, pla you know, wooden dowel, any type of pieces like this. And I'm just getting my piece nice and secure. And you could burnish and pull with this. And this, you know, it's just this little bit of work getting this final part up and around the top of your stone. I have it secured in the back so there's no reason that my gem would break. You know, it's in here snug, it's set with silver. It's very valuable when you set your gems in sterling silver or metal around the outside, it really brings up the value of your piece. For me, it's just a piece of this chakra necklace that I'm doing. So I'm actually just gonna take the top of this, and this is the, how I'm gonna secure it down. I'm taking the top of this, I'm using round pliers. This actually technique is in Another one of my books, a cold joint book, but I'm just gonna bring it over like this into a loop. I'm gonna take my end, hold it in here like this so I've created a loop, and I'm gonna bring it back over. You can make it small, you can make it large, and then I'm just wrapping this around. And it really is such a good solution to have a piece on the bottom and the top. And then I am taking my flat pliers and bringing them in. Okay, I've got the top done. And now I'm gonna flip it around and I can decide whatever way, you know, if I wanna lay the bottom the same way or if I wanna be able to see the loop, you just, I'll do a different type of loop here. You, you just hold your pliers in the front and I'm gonna, of course, bring this around. You can leave extra wire if you want to. Oh, there's that little bit of solder that shouldn't be there. Oh no, this one I wanted to do this way. So if you want your loop to be in the front, you're just gonna twist it around. And then I'm gonna bring this all the way around like this. Not such a good one. There we go. Okay, 
and then I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and finish bringing it around. And that's, you know, so the loop, if you want it facing forward, and you'll see, because if you are actually doing earrings, if this is gonna hang from an earring, you want to be able to have your loop facing this direction. And this I'm using to attach in a whole line of work, but literally you can create rings out of these, you can create, um, you know, just a single pendant. I can hang anything from here that I wanted to. But that is how to set a rose cut gem and the back of it is poised in here perfectly. Thanks for watching. If you're looking to dive a little bit deeper into silversmithing, this is the book that I wrote that is all about the toolkit that I talked about, nomadic travel, building. It's called Intentional Metalsmithing. Check it out on Amazon.